Hey uh, guys, we're here with Garrett Marchbanks, who's coming off a great ride this past weekend in San Francisco, third in the mud. And man, what a what a nightmare that track was, huh? Yeah, that that track was one of the gnarliest mud tracks I've ever ridden. I mean, it was slick, but also super deep, and it wasn't your technical or typical mud races where you kind of just move out of the ruts. It's once you got in the one, you had to stick right in it, and if you tried to hop out, you're hitting the deck <laughs> yeah what 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 are some of the other supercross mud races you've done that kind of compare to that um not many i i guess the only one i really did was uh san diego um in 2019 but okay. that one was more just splashy yeah. yeah it was real like a lot of wa heavy water a lot of puddles and yeah. just stuff like that i mean i was still able to hit majority of all the jumps that night and yeah, this weekend there was no no hit yeah. jumps. Your, your wheels didn't there. come off the ground if you could help it this weekend. Yeah. Well, talk a little bit about let's let's jump back. Um, kind of leading into this season. What were your goals coming in? Um, you know, for a long time, I mean, my goals have always been to win a title. Um, even back when I first came into it. And uh they they haven't changed. I still wanna win a title this year. I mean, I'm only 12 down from the title right now. Um, yeah, I mean, also, uh, I've struggled in the years in the Supercross with being consistent. You know, I, I definitely need to work on that, being a top five guy. And, uh, yeah, just little stuff like that. And so how did the, your preseason go? I mean, did you feel like you had maybe the best lead into a, a, a year that you've ever had? Yeah, it was pretty good. Honestly, we, we made some good changes on the bike, off the bike. Um, you know, last year it felt like that was one of the better years. I feel like my speed was better in 2023 20, and just with the wrist injury, I really struggled with that coming into Supercross even this year. Um, you know, I was a little nervous because last year when I tried to get ready for the last four rounds of Supercross, my wrist wasn't able to hold on through the whoops. So I was definitely nervous to see how that would go and you know, luckily it held up. The wrist has been really good, but no, this year was super solid and super cross. We had a lot of good days, a lot of good weeks. Um, I don't know. Just, I feel like the speed's definitely been the best. Honestly, I think the biggest thing for me was just having consistent weeks and building the whole time. And what about that new uh, Yamaha 250? The engine is pretty much the same, but it's a different chassis, has a different feel to it. How did you adapt to that? Like what, what did those changes feel like to you? Luckily for me, I rode the 450, which was pretty similar to it all outdoors and into the SMX rounds. So when I got onto the 250, it wasn't really much of a frame issue I was dealing with. It was more the power with my size. Yeah. So I was just more getting used to that. It took me about, I don't know, two or three days. But once after two weeks came around, I was really gelling with the bike and the setup was super solid already. And and what about that, man? I, I was, you seem like you're just built better for a 450 and you ride them really well. Were you were you ever considering just trying to ride the 450 in Supercross? Was that an option for you? Yeah, I mean, the team and I definitely had a lot of discussions about it, especially how well my outdoor season went. And uh, finally, I was able to ride a full outdoor season healthy. Um, we definitely thought about it, um, especially how I did in SMX. I had some good top 10s and then the 6 the Moto 1 at LA. Um, but I... I never really got a clean shot at a title in Supercross in the lights class. Besides in 2021, I rode for Mitch. Um, I had a really good year that year. And after that, I've always had just little issues here or there. Or, you know, in 22, I think it was, I had a shoulder injury and a bike issue and then not making a main. So there was never really one solid year. So I told the team I wanted to at least give it another shot this year in the lights class to see what I can do with it. And yeah, luckily it went good and we really gelled with the bike. Awesome. And do you do you feel when you're on a 250? Because what do you weigh, like 185? Um, Right now I'm right around 180. Okay. It's not too bad, but you probably have 25, 30 pounds on most guys, huh? Yeah, yeah. Because in 22, the last time I did race the series in Supercross, I was actually 190, 195 that year. Oh, wow. And I was just a bigger guy. Um, I actually tried to put on a lot of muscle and just mass just to help with injuries and um, possibly my sicknesses. And it still didn't work. So we we tried some different things last year when I got hurt with my wrist. And we really worked on off the bike stuff to figure stuff out. Uh, 
and it really did help. It changed a lot, and uh, we we're definitely able to get me my weight lowered, so that helped with the outdoors and supercross this year on the lights bike. Yeah, interesting. It's so important. You know, we all know how important starts are, and man, I don't care how good your reaction time is and how good your bike is. If you're carrying an extra 30 pounds on everybody else, it's tough. Yeah, it's definitely hard, especially in the lights class, because I feel like outdoors this year on the 450, I was able to finally start top 10 consistently. And I had some motos where I didn't start top 10, but I mean, the 450 was able to, you know, carry my weight around. I didn't have to ride the bike so hard for 30 minutes. And on the 250, I definitely have to realize I have to ride that thing perfect around the whole track, even on my starts, you know. If I flinch just wrong around the gate, you know, it goes from a top five start to 15th. So, yeah, I mean, it's so important catching that shift to third. You go 10 feet too long or too soon and and that's it, right? Like it's got to be perfect. Yeah, we definitely worked on that. Also, uh, the last three weeks before in Anaheim, we were definitely working on shifting points and, you know, we we're getting cones out there and stopwatches to definitely test it. And um, I feel like that was another good part of the program that we did this year was to really study my starts and get them really dialed in. So I wasn't starting an average of 16th place like I was in 22 when I raced Supercross. Is that your average first lap position or something? I think it was. I think my first turn start was uh, 16th. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Oh, you got good at passing. Yeah, definitely did. Well, let's uh, just recap kind of where you're at so far this season. Uh, Anaheim won. You qualified ninth. Got third in your heat, seventh in the main. Um, probably wanted a little more out of that main event finish, but it's solid. And then this pack so weekend qualified fourth, third in the heat again, and then third in the main. Uh, it puts you uh, fourth overall in the championship and only 12 points out of the lead. You're sitting in a good spot. And this past weekend especially, man, we we flaked off a bunch of guys like Joe Shimoda and Voland and um, Ryder D. Some of these guys who are maybe upfront contenders – with those DNFs and bad finishes, they're kind of out of the points chase. So you're in a good spot. Yeah, I definitely uh, told myself the first round, especially was when I got the bad start in the main um, Oldenburg kind of jumped on the gate and I kind of flinched. So I definitely told myself try to get around the five to seven spot just in case to make up a lot of points. So you're not too far behind. And um, yeah, Anaheim was kind of a weird one because I, I definitely thought I, could have been in the fourth spot because I stayed right with Shimoda the whole main until about the halfway or 10 minute mark uh, where a lot of those guys were doing the wheelie jump over the table by the start straight. Um, I had a pretty close moment to where I don't know how I didn't fall. It was pretty bad and just rode really tight after that. So I lost a lot of ground. But, you know, this weekend was definitely good for us as the team. And for me, I, you know, same thing in the main. I, I crashed lap one and was like, oh, great. Well, I got to hurry and get up and get going. Can't lose too many points. And yeah, sure enough, I got third. I didn't even know what place I was in until the last lap. When I looked over at the pit board, they're like, P3. I was like, all right, cool. We'll take that. So that was Sweet. pretty cool. Yeah, that's a great that's a great uh, surprise at the end of a race. I got to ask you um, what conversations went on between you and Phil after the race because they gave him a little interview because I think they knew like that was – you know, he had a podium stolen from him right at the end and he might not get another crack at that just where he's at in his career. What conversations did you guys have after the race? You know, when I crossed the finish, I looked over at the manager's tower there and I seen my boss just throwing his arms up just in excitement. And I looked at the the tower um, and seen I got P3 and I was like, oh, no, did I just pass Phil for third? And then it's sure enough, as he crosses the finish, he got fourth. I pointed at him. I threw my arms up and I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was doing <laughs> that to you. But yeah, no, afterwards, I just hopped off my bike. I gave him a hug and was like, dude, I'm I'm sorry I had to do that to you. But I mean, it, it's racing. It is what it is. And I know if the rules were reversed, he would have done the same thing. Of course. No, it's racing. You guys aren't out there playing patty cakes. This is for money. Right. But uh, I just wondered if he busted your balls a little bit he definitely did a little bit he was like that was definitely my race i was like hey man like i think the last lap i was eight and a half ten seconds faster so maybe you should have picked it up a little bit but <laughs> maybe it wasn't yours yeah right <laughs> um tell me a little bit about the club mx experience i'm i'm stoked to come back there sometime later this year we're trying to get back and check out the facility and 
uh, maybe ride with all you guys for a day or two. But uh, how how good has that been for your program? Just it seems like it's just all encompassing, uh, very much a cohesive team back there. You guys work together. There's kind of somebody crossing every T and dotting every I, and it seems like it's working. Yeah, no, it's been really great. Um, Dirtworks came out this year, um, built us two uh, race spec tracks. So that's been really great to, you know, get our bikes set up. So when we go to the race weekends, our bikes aren't just completely different. Mm. Um, There's definitely years prior to where we didn't know how our bikes were going to be when, until we you get day one. And this year, our bikes seemed like they're pretty dang close. Um, the only difference was just the, the soil difference from east to west. But no, it's nice to have tracks. We have three of them. Um, you've got Jeremy, Phil, um, Jet Reynolds, Cody Shock. You know, those guys ride really good. Um, they're really great, uh, great group of guys to train with. They push really hard um, on the practice days, um, especially Jeremy. Jeremy and I definitely push it super hard. We're definitely practice guys. So it's, it's great to have guys like him that help me push, uh, help each other push um so when we get to the race days it's not as hard to stay up in the front group any of those guys on the east coast gonna surprise us when the first round kicks off over there man i gotta say jeremy's obviously riding really fast but uh cody's been crushing it these last couple weeks um he's de definitely been running times close to us so i wouldn't be surprised to see cody running right up there and jet's been coming around too uh last week he was running some really good times cool cool man well listen I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just wanted to check in and say, great job. Uh, podiums don't come easy, man. So that that was good work. And you're in this title fight. So hang in there and uh, best of luck the rest of the season, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You got it, buddy. We'll see you. See ya. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos, comment what you thought, and share it with your friends.